hands up for shout. Big bag man, they give me notch. Anytime she turn around, she got me over. I see the back, I know the doubt. The headlight, the steady flash. Come and give me that, kitty cat. You turn me into a lot. I wait. You must become my lady. Oh, yeah. You drive me crazy. Yeah. I can't explain this piece. I swear to baby, I swear to baby. You call and you my The way you shaking and yet, baby, girl, you give me fire. Girl, your body gets fire. Girl, you give me the fire. Girl, your body gets fire. That song always gets me lit. It is a song by DJ Maforista featuring one of my favorite Afro pop artists, Wizkid, and it is called Soweto. I have some business-minded folks in the studio with me today, and we're going to be talking about the challenges of doing business in Nigeria. On the hot topic for today, I'm asking the question, is a woman selfish if she chooses not to invest her inheritance in her husband's business? Joining me is Billy Keys Adebi Abiola, who is the founder of We Cyclist. Thank you for joining me. Hi. I have Kemdi Deho. You have like three titles. CEO <laughs> of Future Soft and Creative Director of Always Me. Thank you for coming. Thank you. And of course, our Greek <laughs> <laughs> entrepreneur, I have Esther Ibogo, who is the creative, what are we calling it? Creative uh, director <laughs> of Green Sprout, which is a coconut watering company. Thank you guys for joining me. So let's go straight into it. I want to kind of talk about the challenges of doing business, not just the challenges, the, um, the way we navigate around doing business in Nigeria and how we navigate those challenges. So let me just start with asking, what exactly is the process of bottling, you know, your coconut water? Okay, so... And how, how did you sort of start mm -hmm. the business? You know, mm -hmm. what, what was the inspiration behind it? And, you know, just give us like a brief rundown of, of your business. All right, so, um, like you said, mm -hmm. uh, you know, manage, co-manage green sprout coconut water. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty much what it is. We don't add anything to our coconut water. It's 100% pure. Mm -hmm. We add no preservatives, no additives. We don't even add water. So mm -hmm. you're getting what you get when you mm -hmm. open that tender green coconut. Mm -hmm. um, so it's pretty straightforward for that reason. Mm -hmm. um, but because we don't add anything, we have to make sure that it's preserved the right way. Mm -hmm. And then you talk about challenges of doing business in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. um, we have to keep it cold. Mm -hmm. So let's say we were in another country where electricity is not an issue. Mm -hmm. That wouldn't even be a problem. problem. It would be just so straightforward. But this is Nigeria. This is Lagos. We have a problem with electricity. Mm -hmm. So when we bottle, you know, we, 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 we filter and bottle our coconut water, we have to make sure we refrigerate it. Mm -hmm. And keep it cold mm -hmm. until it gets to the final consumer. So what was the inspiration behind you starting Always Me? So you have, you're, you're kind of a dual entrepreneur, right? Yeah. Serious IT CEO. And then you have a lifestyle sort of baby brand, you know, company that you're running. Um, I guess I'll leave you to tell me about it. Tell us about okay. it. Okay, so um, I, well, Always Me kind of evolved, right? Mm -hmm. So my sister was pregnant. I was yeah. looking for a very special gift mm -hmm. and I couldn't find anything. I didn't want to go to mother care and just mm -hmm. buy some kind of bath set or something. Mm -hmm. You know, I wanted it to be special. And, you know, I kept racking my brain, like, what can I either make, mm -hmm. um, you know, because I'm a very creative person as well and everyone that knows me knows I like mm -hmm. making gifts. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it was like on my mind for a long time. Thank God, man. You know that pregnancy is mm -hmm. nine months. Nine months. <laughs> so we had, had some time. time, yeah. And then one day I had a dream, um, and in this dream I made an Ankara play mat out of my old Ankara, my mom's old Ankara, and my mm -hmm. sister's old Ankara. And I woke up and I was so excited, mm -hmm. you know. And I woke my husband up and then I'm like, "Babe, I have this idea," and he's mm -hmm. like, "Babe, seven a.m. It's Saturday morning for Ankara mats." <laughs> I'm like, really? <laughs> You yeah. know, um, and then I, I called my mom and she was like, is everything okay? I'm like, yes, why? She's like, seven in the morning, Saturday. You don't usually wake up this early. I'm like, yes, I just need your Ankara. Mm -hmm. I went to her, got all the Ankara from there straight to the market. Mm -hmm. I sat there from about 11 in the morning till seven in the evening making this mat. So I, you actually took the dream as, as reality? Yes. Okay. It was because it looked so beautiful in the mm -hmm. dream. And I'm like, I need, and you usually need I don't oh. remember my dreams. Mm -hmm. So this was you know, for me, it mm -hmm. felt like, okay, this is wow. a message. You need to do this. Mm -hmm. um, and I did. And, you know, it came out so beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, and when I presented it at the baby shower, immediately mm -hmm. I actually got orders. Orders. You know. the, okay. Yeah. So it was kind of like, 
Okay. You landed into it. You landed yeah. into exactly. the side hustle. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, you know, my sister w- was obviously very excited about it. And she's mm. like, okay, you know what? Since people are already, like, let's do this, let's properly. Do this properly. And the brand, you know, since then has actually evolved. Now we have 26 products. Okay. Um, and you only started with one? We started with one, you know. And how many um, years have you been in business? Two, two and a half years. Oh, wow. Well, almost two and a half years. Mm-hmm. What was the inspiration behind being conscious about, you know, recycling in Nigeria? Like, did you see it as a business or was it, are you just a goody two-shoes? No, Is that what you goody <laughs> two-shoes? No, no, yeah. no. I think for me, it was just like, you know, I lived in the US for about 13 years mm-hmm. and, you know, come and visit Nigeria, go back and just see that there's a lot, you know, like there's a difference. Like there, it's very clean mm-hmm. and you have trash cans everywhere. Mm-hmm. But here you have a lot of trash. And, you know, struggle to kind of reconcile that. Like, mm-hmm. you know, Nigeria is an amazing place. Mm-hmm. Why is it that we're just struggling with trash? Sure, yeah. You know, and then um, took a class while I was in school mm-hmm. and kind of discovered that there's so many people that live in, you know, places like Nigeria that mm-hmm. just like struggle because of trash. Mm-hmm. Their communities are dirty. They are flawed. They have malaria. Mm-hmm. And all these things are because they just don't dispose of their trash properly. Mm-hmm. So it was a combination of the goody two shoes mm-hmm. plus the fact that there is actually a business opportunity. Mm-hmm. There are so many big companies here mm-hmm. in Nigeria that buy trash. They actually use trash mm-hmm. and make products. So mm-hmm. people buy broken buckets mm-hmm. and make chairs, mm-hmm. you know, here in Nigeria. So mm-hmm. it's just like, how can you connect this, you know, huge amount of, of uh, raw material mm-hmm. with someone that's willing to buy, buy it and it. use it? Mm-hmm. So that was really how we cycle. So started. how did you start the, what's the funding that goes into that? So, oh, God. Um, <laughs> and, and, then, and, and then you pitching social responsibility because in Nigeria it's something that I think we all agree that we don't do enough of so how did you sort of pitch this idea and how did you get it you know off the ground I think yeah. I was really lucky because I, I went to MIT mm-hmm. and MIT is one of the mm-hmm. <laughs> it's one of the like mm-hmm. you know um, most entrepreneurial schools, schools you can mm-hmm. ever go to mm-hmm. like there's, every single day there's some competition or mm-hmm. the other so it was pretty easy not easy mm-hmm. but it was like very convenient you had the template yeah. to just apply for this, apply for mm-hmm. that. And we got a lot of, you know, funding for mm-hmm. that. And there was, whilst you were, whilst whilst you were in school. school. Okay. And then also took classes, mm-hmm. took the right classes, mm-hmm. you know, met the right advisors and mentors mm-hmm. that helped us to kind of develop the idea. Mm-hmm. And of course, it was really hard to... So ex- you took it seriously from there, oh, like yeah. as though this was something you were actually going to execute. Yes. Okay. So it was the second year of business school and it was mm-hmm. deciding either to apply for work or mm-hmm. should I go and do this crazy idea? Mm-hmm. And I was like, I've worked for five years already. Mm-hmm. I'm tired. Yeah. I can't do it again. Mm-hmm. And I want to go back to Nigeria. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? Like, mm-hmm. if, any, if it doesn't work out, I'll look for a job. Mm-hmm. Like, worst case scenario. You can always fall back I find, on a job. Yeah. So let me just do this thing. So mm-hmm. did it. And, you know, we came to Nigeria and did some interviews. And mm-hmm. people were like, ah, oh, yes. You know, whenever I look at the trash, I feel so bad. Mm-hmm. You know, people were like, saying real Mm -hmm. emotional things about how waste affects them. Mm -hmm. And it was very, that kind of gave us the motivation to continue. Mm -hmm. We also pitched it in a way that, and said, look, your your brand could actually gain from helping clean up communities Mm because people were looking for CSR. Mm -hmm. So we kind of keyed into that CSR CSR initiative. And a lot of people kind of helped and supported us. And it doesn't have to be only money. Mm -hmm. It can be, oh, this bus that you don't need again, give it to us or use it. Yeah. You know, so... Just being creative about that. And then you really find helped. the people that need these waste materials or you sort of recycle them in-house yourself we and then found sell people them. That need it. So they said, okay. look, I want this. Give me, let mm-hmm. it be like this. Supply it like this. Mm-hmm. And we supply them. And is it completely non-profit? Like there's no, do, do you want to make money out of this? Oh yeah, I want it. Okay, yeah. okay. So I guess, in, in, <laughs> so I guess the, more, the, the, the more volume that you recycle, which is where the money then yeah. starts to Absolutely. come. Okay. Absolutely. I'm, I'm going to be it's watching billion, you. Billion, billion, billion Naira business. Really? Billion. Really. So are you, enjoying the benefit of a monopoly now or are there you know other what? people that are sort of coming to they're yeah, coming for your shaking, spot shaking the pot, shaking the <laughs> yeah pot. yeah but it's definitely all about like look what mm-hmm. value can you bring Brands, as your yeah. own company mm-hmm. you know it's all about people are going to have your idea they're going to copy mm-hmm. your idea but mm-hmm. how can you execute and how mm-hmm. can you make sure that you do it in a good way i don't think that we think enough socially um, as people, we're all very selfish. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, like, I commend you. I really, really do commend <laughs> you because it's not um, the most refined or dignified thing it's to nice. do. Do you understand? You have to go to, like, waste, you know, I mean, I can imagine the smells and the, yeah. you know, communities. <laughs> I'm going you there have to, You know what I mean? <laughs> on, I'm not going to lie to you now. You know what I mean? Like, it, to, to come out of self and actually do that yourself is, is commendable. Exactly. Um, but let me throw it over to you because your recycling kind of affects my dear, over yes. here, um, you're bottling coconut water. Obviously, you're buying plastic bottles. We don't manufacture hardly anything in Nigeria. So, um, can you speak to recycling and how conscious are you being about, you know, recycling? We started business June, mm-hmm. June of 2016. Mm-hmm. And 
From the period of June mm-hmm. to December, the cost of my bottles mm-hmm. went up twice. Wow. Right? Now, it's something, if, if you're and not this thinking... Was, was it, do you think this was related to, obviously, the, the, the economy, dollar? Yeah, yeah. yeah, the economy, mm-hmm. the dollar, mm-hmm. Naira falling mm-hmm. and all that. And like you said, we're importing everything. Mm-hmm. Even if we're not importing the, that particular plastic, mm-hmm. we're importing the materials yeah. that are used to mold mm-hmm. those. So all these costs... They, they, they affect. all mm-hmm. affect things down the line. Mm-hmm. So my the prices of my bosses went up twice. Bosses different from caps. Caps also went up twice. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're not thinking of being a sustainable business mm-hmm. that's long term, mm-hmm. you would think, eh, I'll just increase the price of, the price of my product. But that's not how things work. Mm-hmm. You're trying to grow a brand. You mm-hmm. cannot be yo-yoing on your price. price. Yeah. So it's a brand that you bear. Mm-hmm. You bear that, mm-hmm. you know, in that you, you bear that and just move on. We don't really know how things are going to get. Mm-hmm. And the only reason why now I don't know how much plastics cost is because I bought the last time I we bought was in bulk. Mm-hmm. So we are still benefiting from mm-hmm. the Your past price. price. Yeah. I do not know now how much it would be. Mm-hmm. So we've thought about we've tinkered with the idea of you know maybe uh, in our retail partners maybe having a, a little you know buckets mm-hmm. where if you drink it there you, you just you know put it the recycle bottle, yeah. there. And then to have some sort of um, uh, some process where they get an they get yeah, yeah an incentive um, mm-hmm. system there. So mm-hmm. maybe you get a discount off of your next purchase. Mm-hmm. We've thought about it, mm-hmm. and I'm the one who is coming in with the Americana, mm-hmm. which I don't even understand why that is an Americana mindset. Yes. Mm-hmm. And he's like, you know, this is Nigeria. People mm-hmm. might not really want yeah, to want to, to do, do that. Mm-hmm. So I think that where. Felicius comes in. I think mm-hmm. that is really key because mm-hmm. it's changing the whole mindset so of, of, how, we of how we deal with waste. Yeah, of how we deal with waste. Like, why, mm-hmm. why throw it away when you can mm-hmm. use it? Yeah. So, Candy, I want to touch on your um, CEO side, your <laughs> IT uh, side. I know that you... Um, the crux of the business was building websites for companies. Yes. Uh, and you kind of talked about how websites sort of became obsolete and, you know, the recession kind of slowed down business in that area. Mm-hmm. Where, was, where did the brainwave come to sort of create a, I guess, blue ocean for your business, for the, you know, IT business, when the websites aren't really bringing in as much money, what did you sort of do to revive that? Um, okay. So or how else did the recession affect you guys and what else? Did yeah, you so I mean, last year, I would say, was, you know, the hardest year mm-hmm. of, you know, doing business um, for several reasons. Obviously, the dollar, um, you know, madness mm-hmm. really affected us because we still do have a lot of um, dollar related costs mm-hmm. in terms of our hosting is in the U.S. because, again, electricity. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's hard to actually host in Nigeria. Even now, they've got some server companies here, but still the price difference is Mm-hmm. so small, small, you know, but the headache that you'll have is so big. big so you're yeah. just like, okay, whatever, let's just keep that. Um, so about five years ago, we actually started doing social media management for some of our clients. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was this, you know, minute baby, mm-hmm. um, you know, practice that we had in our company um, that wasn't really, you know, a big money maker, mm-hmm. but it's something that, you know, I saw as this is the future. So we need to somehow make sure that we're part of the future. Mm-hmm. You know, technology evolves so fast mm-hmm. and it's sometimes hard to actually be able to say, that's it. This mm-hmm. is what you have to focus mm-hmm. on, you know, because there's so many different things. Some things work, some things don't, don't. work, you know. Um, and now, you know, in during the recession, you know, um, we realized that, okay, people were holding on to their money like this, mm-hmm. you know, but what they did want was exposure, you know. Mm-hmm. So instead of getting a website, um, you know, they were like, okay, this money for that we have for the website, exactly. can we spread it over the next one year? Yeah. And can you just do social media management mm-hmm. for us? You know, so you're still earning the same, same money. money. Um, it's a little bit more work, mm-hmm. but, you know, you're actually helping brands, you know, put their names out there, mm-hmm. build followers and helping them build their business and also creating a new channel for them to mm-hmm. actually convert, um, you know, followers into potential customers. customers. So the whole of last year, you know, um, we got only four web development jobs, which is, oh. four. yeah, I mean, it's wow. ridiculous. Like mm-hmm. between, so this Q1 that just finished, mm-hmm. we've done six, mm-hmm. okay. you know, so yeah, yeah. that just as a, yeah. um, you know, like a reference yeah, point, yeah, yeah. you know, and I mean, when I say Q1, January is kind of dead. dead actually, yeah, yeah. Even know? February to join it. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, and that just shows you that, okay, you know what, 
last year people were really holding their money like this mm-hmm. and were afraid mm-hmm. but i think this year people are like okay you know what we don't know how long this recession is going to last yeah. so let's not be paralyzed by yeah. fear mm-hmm. let's still move on we still do need a website mm-hmm. you know because depending on whether you're um doing B2B business or B2C mm-hmm. business, a website is still important, actually important. important and relevant, especially in the B2B segment. Mm-hmm. Um, for social media, social media works fantastic if mm-hmm. you have a product and mm-hmm. if you're doing B2C. Mm-hmm. It doesn't work that well if you're doing B2B. Mm-hmm. So B2B, your social media will be for top of the mind awareness, mm-hmm. stay in people's faces, you know, for um, engaging people with, you know, maybe some questions, giveaways mm-hmm. and things like that. Just getting your brand out there. Mm-hmm. But for B2C, it's actual sales. Mm-hmm. Well, back to you, Bilkis. So speaking of costs, we're talking about all these random costs that either help <laughs> or hurt your business. Mm-hmm. Now, you sit on a legal state um, economic, sorry. Yeah, employment trust employment fund. Trust employment trust fund. fund. Hey, so now people are looking for money. <laughs> um, so how would you sort of advise businesses that are sort of like first stage, you know, second, what stage would you say it always me is? Like, we're still, second. you're still small, you're not small, I, medium yet? So small? Um, I think we're still, I mean, I guess it depends on how you define small, right? So let's just say small, medium, right? Yeah, SME. SME, yeah. So how would you sort of encourage SMEs to sort of grow? Um, a lot of people feel like there's no money in Nigeria. Nobody's giving any money. Family mm-hmm. friend, no, family is not even borrowing you money. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what Nobody I mean? So smiling. you sit on that board. For the people who are skeptical about finding a loan, especially in Nigeria, what can you advise um, yeah, people to absolutely. sort of look out for? I think one of the things I've seen is that there's a lot of businesses, a lot of people have great ideas. Mm-hmm. Um, but like you said, a lot of people are just kind of stuck in this cycle where the running costs are just like Mm-hmm. Eating into their profits. profits. And so the Lagos State Employment Trust Fund is a 6.25 billion naira fund per annum. Mm-hmm. So the government is supposed to contribute um, 25 billion over four years mm-hmm. and is to give loans of for SME. Is that for Lagos State or is that for Just Nigeria? For Lagos State. Just for Lagos State. So you, have, you must be a Lagos State resident. You must mm-hmm. have you know tax registration. Mm-hmm. And you know, of course, the business must be in Lagos. Mm-hmm. And you know, for micro businesses, like really small businesses, they can mm-hmm. get up to 500,000 naira. Mm-hmm. And for SMEs, you can get up to 5 million naira. Mm-hmm. And then there's also employability programs and mm-hmm. training. Mm-hmm. And it's really a great um, thing because people that have businesses that have been running for some time, so mm-hmm. they say you must be in operation for at least a year. Mm-hmm. Um, and they kind of want to maybe buy that machine mm-hmm. or, you know, buy that new generator or something mm-hmm. that would help them They're to bit, really re- capture pick up scale. their business. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. You know, they can, you know, borrow money. And, you know, you look at commercial banks, most of the mm-hmm. time they, um, they borrow at, you know, crazy 30%. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then they ask for collateral mm-hmm. and all yeah. these things. So, so what the, are the, re- the, the key requirements? Talk, there's mm-hmm. no, you don't need any collateral. Mm-hmm. You just need two guarantors. Mm-hmm. So two people that have like a tax card and lastra. Mm-hmm. Then you also need to have, it's, and it's 5%. Per annum. Per annum. Mm-hmm. And it's also not only about money. Mm-hmm. So we, we, what we do is we also give training. Mm-hmm. So we've seen a lot of people have businesses. They don't know, okay, mm-hmm. simple HR, mm-hmm. simple accounting mm-hmm. that will help you to save money. Mm-hmm. We do that. We also have someone that we pair with you that's mm-hmm. kind of like a coach that mm-hmm. helps you to get your business to the, take your business to the, the next, next level. level. Okay. And there's also, so you have additional sort of um, value-added exactly. services exactly. that and come then, with it. And then also, there's also the leverage part where mm-hmm. it's like, okay, you're working in Lagos. People say, oh, they have so many challenges with Lagos. Mm-hmm. Maybe they have this permit that they have mm-hmm. issues with that permit. Being under the LSATF umbrella, mm-hmm. it helps you to say, okay, look, I have this issue with government. Mm-hmm. We'll take it up for you yeah. and make sure that... Mm-hmm. Because at the end of the day, we want Lagos to be somewhere that is friendly mm-hmm. to businesses, where yeah. businesses can feel like, look... Mm-hmm. They can thrive. They can thrive. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Okay, so speaking of all these helpers, <laughs> let me now come back to you. When it comes to staffing in Nigeria, how have you sort of dealt with finding the right people? Have you been through staff? Like, is your, what's your staff turnover, in, even in, yeah. like, your year of business? So, well, I guess we've been lucky not to have any turnovers mm-hmm. yet. And okay. they're just the relatively still new. Touch, where's wood? Touch yeah. something. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, to be, you know, I don't know. To be honest, when it comes with staff, Mm-hmm. You it, you are just throwing spaghetti on the wall and seeing what's next. <laughs> yeah, right. You really have no idea yeah. what it's going to it's be. Like trial and error. Yeah, you, it's trial and error. Like you know, you interview people. Mm-hmm. They, you know, you ask even if you ask the right questions. There's some people who are just mm-hmm. programmed mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. kill interviews. Mm-hmm. They yeah. just blow you away. Mm-hmm. And then there are people who are not that great at interviews, but then they are that that is the right mm-hmm. person. So right. you never really know. So we hired um, our staff. So far, so good. You know, there are things that we're like, yeah, you know, mm-hmm. this has to change. But I also understand that I kind of, I have to, we have to show them. Mm-hmm. We have to 
show them how we want them to be. Mm. You know, like you cannot just hire staff and think that that is it mm-hmm. and leave them to their own devices. Is, yeah. You sometimes you have to micromanage. But doesn't that kill where you need your you need to run business development and go and sell your stuff? Yeah. There's already like a distribution, yeah, you know, issue that yeah. we're dealing with. You're trying to, you know, go and find out who's going to buy your coconut water. Yeah. There are things that you have to put in place. And after that certificate, how long does that take? You know what I mean? Like you yeah. kind of just want people who are breaking coconuts to just be able to break those damn yeah. coconuts <laughs> and you to be great. Do you yeah. understand? Yeah. It's simple. It's true. You know what I mean? So how, how are you comfortably able to leave such a simple task? Yeah. Um, and not kind of worry that there's going to be mosquito in that coconut. I know. You know what I mean? But, but it's, <laughs> that's why I said sometimes you have to micromanage. And I think that if you put in that effort in the initial stages mm-hmm. of really looking over them and saying, yes. no, that is not it. This mm-hmm. is it. And just being attentive to everything they do, mm-hmm. eventually you can let go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? So you, you, you are maintaining like a prolonged training approach. And like it's necessary. It's necessary. Yeah. Especially when, it, when the things seem rudimentary mm-hmm. and you're like, oh, of course they, they should know. No, yeah. they, you cannot assume mm-hmm. that not they know. Chance, you can't with food. Especially like, with food, exactly. Yeah. Like hygiene is key. key yeah. So it's very important that I am watching everything that you do. Mm-hmm. These are things, I used to do these things before I hired them and I I made it very yeah. clear. Don't right. think that I'm hiring you to do something. No, yeah. I used to do this. The only reason you are here is because I have to do other things. Right. So they know that this is you something I used do to. It. Yeah. I can't do it. So when I can't do it, mm-hmm. I don't. I don't. I don't need you. Mm-hmm. But I, I need you here because I'm trying to grow this business. Yes. So I like we always have to mm-hmm. watch them. Mm-hmm. Be very vocal. Mm-hmm. Don't say oh, mm, let me not say no. Better mm-hmm. say it. Mm-hmm. Let's just be very yeah. clear as mm-hmm. to what they are doing wrong. Mm-hmm. And one thing that they do sometimes that I don't, I, 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 I don't like is when they call me all the time for mm-hmm. any. Right. This is now not you know the the bottling. Right. This is just admin stuff. They are flashing me. Just flash. <laughs> <laughs> just flashing me anyhow. I love that. And I, I, I had to call. I said, listen, uh-huh. do not. Yeah. Flash me, yeah, you know, or something so silly. If yeah. it is important, send me a text message mm-hmm. and I know what mm-hmm. to do. Don't be flashing me anyhow. Right. First of all, document all your processes, is, it's mm-hmm. very important. Mm-hmm. You cannot assume that this new person knows how you want it just yeah. because the previous person knows and mm-hmm. the previous person might not even have time to teach them mm-hmm. or you know or even if both of them are still in the organization you know like knowledge i've realized there's mm-hmm. some people who suck up knowledge like a sponge mm-hmm. and they want to learn and they're mm-hmm. continuously like mm-hmm. like you said they don't sit around they actually say oh how do i fix that how do mm-hmm. oh, what's this thing how do i do this you know mm-hmm. and they're constantly asking questions and then there are other people who are just like this <laughs> so you have to study their personality yeah, yeah so yeah. it's it's really a personality thing you know so the ones that you know kind of just sit back and wait for you yeah you need to be flogging them yeah, every yeah. day yeah. the other people you need to be dangling the carrot like yeah. woo, this is what yeah. we can do for you you know like if you um perform better you know and i think that's kind of how you get bring out the best out of people mm-hmm. but it's really I don't think there's like a blanket approach. I think mm-hmm. it's really, again, dependent on each business, mm-hmm. you know, um, the skill level. Mm-hmm. But really what, what we've seen, so for example, with Always Me, mm-hmm. we've put a lot of technology in place. So mm-hmm. we have a project management um, mm-hmm. software that manages our production mm-hmm. um, because, as I said, side hustle, we're not always there, mm-hmm. you know. So we need to use technology to be able to monitor everything. Mm-hmm. Um, and the best tool for that is WhatsApp because everybody has WhatsApp. Mm-hmm. The tailors have WhatsApp, the production staff have WhatsApp, the admin staff have WhatsApp, we have mm-hmm. WhatsApp. So we have lots of different WhatsApp groups mm-hmm. within the business mm-hmm. where, you know, information is exchanged. If they go fabric shopping, that's how I approve the fabrics. I'm like, yeah. okay, this, 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 and this. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, so you just have to be smart about right. it. And I think, um, you know, I learned this pretty early from Futuresoft, actually. Mm -hmm. Um, At the beginning, I had a lot of um, project-based, like, freelance Mm -hmm. um, developers. So I didn't really need that much structure because it was, this is the project. This is what we're going to do. This is how long it's going to take. Okay, go and do the work. Send me an update every day. Mm -hmm. That works quite easy. Mm -hmm. But then when you now get somebody into the business Mm -hmm. that, you know, is supposed to do what you're doing so that you can go and chase some big money, money, you know, um, you very quickly realize that the things that, you know, you take for granted or... That seem commonsensical. Yes, are not really. Mm -hmm. And then you also realize that there's 
so much information in your head that you haven't documented. Yeah. documented. Yeah. And I think that, you know, when you're a small business and you're doing stuff by yourself, Self. it happens very mm -hmm. easily. Yeah. So my advice is document, 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 document and create good. templates as mm -hmm. well, because then you don't need to micromanage. This mm -hmm. is the email. This is how we send it yeah. out. Mm -hmm. Every new person that comes and mm -hmm. asks a question, this is how you send it out. This is how we do a quotation. You know, so this is mm -hmm. HR. This is this is exactly. your contract. Exactly. You know, yeah. so then the micromanaging becomes less because mm -hmm. there's a structure. There's a structure. All you need to do is fill this thing. Mm -hmm. So maybe you check it a couple of times. Mm -hmm. Okay, did they do it right? They didn't do it right, and then you know I'll, you keep correcting. Mm -hmm. You know, like she said, don't keep quiet. I think. Uh, well, thank you for those pointers. Thank yeah. you for the sound Thanks wisdom. For <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys for staying with us. We'll be right back, and we'll be discussing the hot topic of the day. Hey guys, here is a story. My father was a hard worker and a well-accomplished man. I absolutely loved my father, and my heart is only just healing from his unexpected passing last year. I married a man similar to my dad, and my dad was very pleased with him. He is my world. Now, being a responsible father, he left me with a hundred thousand pounds cash, a property in Lagos, and one in London. The paperwork has just been processed, and I should be getting all access to my funds any day now. My husband works with his father, but has recently been trying to break out on his own. He needs collateral for a loan to seal a deal he expects to gain 200% profit from. He passed the comment the other day that startled me. He said, when we get the money from your inheritance, I can apply for that loan. And I thought, we? As much as I trust my husband, my father worked very hard for his money, and I find it risky to invest it in a deal that may go wrong, and one that I have no idea what layers or intricacies there may be. Why does he assume this? My name is not on any of the business deals. I have plans for retirement and I've been thinking about what to do with my assets. Should I be thinking as we? Or is it okay to selfishly do as I please with my money? I asked my mother and she thinks I should stay out of it. She said my dad never bothered her for anything hugely financial, so she can only advise me to pray and not give away what I will regret. I'm not against lending money when there is need especially when it comes to contributing to my household, but this is my inheritance. Is this something I will regret down the line, especially if the business venture eventually becomes a success? Is it okay to say no in a marriage? Will it affect our relationship? The house we live in is property he also inherited from his parents. How does one say no to a spouse without looking selfish? Welcome back, guys. Well, you've heard the story. Billy Keats. <laughs> what do you have to say? Do you feel some type of way about that kind of relationship? What, what would you say to this lady? Um, hmm. Let me answer, ask the question. Is it selfish to say no in marriage? Because, hmm. hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, one of the things that I've learned in marriage is that like, you can't take people's advice. Because mm -hmm. no marriage is the same. Because mm -hmm. your friend can come and tell you something. Ah, that guy is, is a criminal. Is mm -hmm. this, is that. And uh, you will now follow the advice mm -hmm. and then yeah, you now regret it. Mm -hmm. So I would say, personally, if it was me, I would mm -hmm. ask, what has he done for her? Because mm -hmm. you know, usually marriage is give and take. take yeah. so maybe her husband has been helping her, supporting mm -hmm. her. And maybe he just needs that little extra push for his business. Mm -hmm. But she needs to think about it. Mm -hmm. And also think about, okay, what kind of business is it? Is it something that is going to work? Is mm -hmm. it something that... Because, you know, family and friends, mm -hmm. you know? So if all those boxes are ticked mm -hmm. and it's a good business, I would, I would say, not, don't give everything over. There's a minimum level of money mm -hmm. that a woman should have. Mm -hmm. It's like your... To your, herself. To yourself. Mm -hmm. Like, nobody needs to know. Because mm -hmm. that's your money of when if there's nothing. nothing that's, when they, that's what mm -hmm. puts food on the table, the table for yeah. everybody to eat. Mm -hmm. You know? But if he needs help mm -hmm. and needs support and you have that extra money mm -hmm. and it's like well-structured, mm -hmm. where well, it's not like, oh... I'll borrow because you know when they say I'll on borrow, the pillow, yay. I'll borrow you money. The money is you're not going to get the money again. Yeah, yeah. But it's well structured, and mm -hmm. you're like, hey, I have a lawyer. Like you mm -hmm. want to bring, you want to bring lawyers into. You it. do want to bring lawyers into ah, it because no. I don't think you should go into a deal in the dark because that's what causes bitterness. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I, I agree with you. Like I'm conflicted a little bit, but yeah, for the most hard. part, we are finding money somewhere. Else. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know you, you are a good person, you know what I mean? Based on the work that you even do. You okay, like, you know, you want the money, money, I'll collect. Yeah. You understand? So, ah. so, I get it. So, how do you not shoot yourself in the foot? Let me pass it over to you. Do you feel like... Because you know, came to her and was like, oh, when the money comes. So, there's obviously an expectation mm -hmm. that, you know, the money is a we thing. Mm -hmm. um, so, do you see it as my money is my money and your money is our money? Or um, sometimes you feel like 
you know, maybe we should give a little bit more. You give. My money is my money, though. Okay. But, but <laughs> like, let's get that straight. Yeah, it's uh-huh. I, I, it's true. Yeah. But then you know, sometimes you give, and then mm-hmm. it depends on the situation at hand. Mm-hmm. Now, what I didn't like about this situation was mm-hmm. the fact that he assumed mm-hmm. that I would be okay with but it. But isn't that a normal assumption in a partnership? Because it's, it is we. N- yeah. No, because it's it's an inheritance, yeah. which means mm-hmm. that I did not have that money. Mm-hmm. Somebody died mm-hmm. and then trusted it to me. Mm-hmm. Right? So what if my father were alive? Mm-hmm. You know, there's a lot of sentiments that mm-hmm. come into this. This is right. not money that you... Maybe yeah. I had my, my job and I got a huge yeah. bonus. Bonus and, then, yeah. There are sentiments attached to it, mm-hmm. yeah. right? And there might be conversations that I had with my father mm-hmm. of what he would have loved, loved for me for to me do with it. Yeah. So you cannot just come out and just assume that mm-hmm. I'll be willing to. Mm-hmm. What if I'm not even ready to touch, touch the money? Yeah. You yeah. know, there are just things that... Now, once mm-hmm. that... Because I have a very wild image. I can start to think many mm-hmm. things. Mm-hmm. Like, hmm, how, how, how... Who? Like, how can I expect How can I do? Yeah, you know, yeah. like, why, why, and why would you just come and, and assume? And mm-hmm. it's just so insensitive. Mm-hmm. It's one thing for you to ask, mm-hmm. which I know some men are not comfortable doing. Mm-hmm. But yeah. if this is your business, right, and you really need this investment... Mm-hmm. Then you ask, like you treat it like you are asking for an investment. Yeah. You cannot mm-hmm. just assume because when you assume, I don't think you would take that investment that seriously. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then the other thing is you have to know your partner, right? And know the track record. Mm-hmm. Now, if we've had a track uh, a track record of That's what you were saying, yeah. of you know money, mm-hmm. not adding up, not money. you know you, <laughs> you gotta apply wisdom, yeah, yeah, yeah because yeah. when if push comes to shove, if, yeah. if, 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 if there's a ditch somewhere, mm-hmm. you will have to cover it up. Mm-hmm. So in, in this situation, I think the money might even be better as a buffer if mm-hmm. that was the situation where the you know, funny money behavior, mm-hmm. right? So it might even be better for you for you not to even touch it mm-hmm. because what if this business doesn't pan out? Pan out right? to be, mm-hmm. That's that backup money. Yeah, and exactly. then number three, I need to know that you have done absolutely everything mm-hmm. that you needed to do mm-hmm. to get financing mm-hmm. and I'm your last resort. resort yeah. Don't call so you me. think that a wife shouldn't be the first port of call if you feel, I mean, that's your life partner. So that's somebody you obviously trust. So do you think that we as women are selfish in the way we okay. sort of push men this, to this go, and, go, and, go and sort it out? This so is how I mean, shouldn't it be you? I would take it in a business perspective. Okay. Mm-hmm. If it is a one man, you know, sole proprietorship, yeah. maybe I'm your first port of call, call. point yeah. of call. Yeah. But if it is a corporation, I shouldn't be your first point of call. Yeah. Mm. Right? right. So if this is a corporation we're talking mm-hmm. about, then please. Yeah. So how would you sort of address that we, you know, support him before he blows? So that when he blows, it's not Shalewa that is, coming, <laughs> that is ripping the profits. You know what I mean? What would you um, say to that? So, I mean, personally, I'm a businesswoman. Mm-hmm. So for me, it would be a business decision. Mm-hmm. And I would first say, okay, you know what? Can I see what exactly you want to do with this money? Mm-hmm. And if... It doesn't make sense. Mm. I will tell you, sorry, but I don't think that you should go and borrow this money from anybody. Yeah. You know? Not even me. Not, Not even me. Really me yeah. You know, um, and I would make it very clear that this is an investment, mm-hmm. not a borrow or yeah. Yeah. I will yeah. pay you or back later, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. Um, and I would actually say... So you would outline your terms very clearly. Outline my terms. So, you know, either there's um, some kind of equity attached to whatever mm-hmm. I'm giving, mm-hmm. um, because at the end of the day, this is what my father worked hard for. Mm-hmm. So I have to use it responsibly, mm-hmm. you know. If not, it might just come from heaven and come my head, <laughs> you know. So mm-hmm. for me, it would be something that I would also tell him that you can't have everything. Mm-hmm. Let's be smart mm-hmm. about this. We, if we're have talking you about... we said no in marriage? And, and, I mean, and a lot of the time, have, yeah. it's a lot of the time, it's you know a fight. But it's the same thing when mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. get said no to. to yeah. You know, you're also not happy with the no, no right? Yeah. Um, but I think one thing that in marriage you have to remember: we're on the same team. Mm-hmm. So when I say no, mm-hmm. it's not because I'm being spiteful. It's not because you know I I want I don't want you to succeed. Mm-hmm. But it's because I don't think that in this situation mm-hmm. what you're mm-hmm. asking is reasonable or mm-hmm. makes sense. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So either you bring stronger arguments forward mm-hmm. and convince me so that mm-hmm. I can change the no to a yes, yes. Mm-hmm. or you just say okay, you know what. You maybe try and even understand my points. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, obviously with finances, it's sometimes hard. It's, it mm-hmm. seems very black and white because once you said no, there's no understanding. You know what I mean? Well, it's almost like what? a proposal. If somebody says no, you assume that's the end of the, the relationship. relationship. Yeah. You know, and I truly feel that with the mm-hmm. finance thing, I truly feel like it almost feels like a huge crack. 
it's like a huge disappointment, especially if the person feels like entitled yeah. yeah a, a bank manager is not going to ask me all these questions you're so, my wife you know so they're not expecting think, the grilling yeah, yeah well but i think it also depends on you know like what kind of relationship you have as mm-hmm. like i said every marriage is different mm-hmm. you know yeah. so the the um you know dynamics, dynamics. might mm-hmm. be exactly. completely different yeah. you know and i think if you you knew me when you married, married me, me yeah. so you know that first of all i always ask plenty questions and mm-hmm. you want to buy conflicts for what he won't even come to you because you want yes to ask <laughs> you want to ask questions that you're exactly. asking him, yeah. so if you do come to me mm-hmm. be ready to answer all those questions because mm-hmm. you know i will have many questions because mm-hmm. you know that i understand business as well you know mm-hmm. and because you know that i will i don't want you to go and fail mm-hmm. that's you know what mm-hmm. the for me it would be important because mm-hmm. if i feel like you know what this investment is a bit wonky mm-hmm. and there's no way that you're getting my mm-hmm. inheritance okay. my bonus my anything yeah. you know mm-hmm. um but if i feel that you know what this is actually a really good business opportunity um i would say okay you know what let's do it like this get this amount of money because this can do this 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 mm-hmm. till then then after that let's go find so you give him some yeah okay. i would i would but obviously as i said those all those boxes need to check first yeah. and you need to be able to answer all my questions mm-hmm. and you know not get angry mm-hmm. as well that i'm asking those questions mm-hmm. because yeah. at the end of the day you know this is my money mm-hmm. and it's money that i didn't have before well, yes yeah. but it's also as as i said it's sentimental Mental. yeah you know so it's not just any kind of oh well, i did one yeah. government deal and yeah. i have yeah. 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 you know that one that's different because you feel with that kind of like if, if that was yeah. you feel like i can do it again yeah. 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 even if he blows the money i will yeah. do it again yeah. i can get that money again so how would you um, address financial transparency a lot of people don't talk about finances yeah. before they get married sometimes it's actually uncomfortable there are some guys that their body language even their demeanor doesn't Mm-hmm. You, you, you're not you're not going to ask you know what i mean they don't give off that you can ask and i asked them an uncle of mine once and i asked him i said does your wife know what's in your bank account he goes why you know what i mean mm-hmm. and i said what do you mean why he said if she's not contributing to at least 50% of the bills in this house mm-hmm. she don't need to know my bank account how do you feel about that? you I have your own money mm-hmm. i have my, my own money. money i went to school mm-hmm. i have this education mm-hmm. so yeah. i can work make and it, make my make own money make, yeah. of course we have joint things and he takes care of all mm-hmm. expenses and everything but mm-hmm. in terms of knowing okay this is how much enters your account mm-hmm. your daily basis i don't know mm. and don't you don't know. feel it's important to know is, oh. is it important or is it not is it, I don't think is, it, so. is, it is it is it a conversation that is awkward to have or I mean, if i ask if just, i sit in there and say okay how much do you have well, show me all your bank of course you probably show me but there might be a, oh i need to transfer <laughs> like you know there might be a time where you need to know i i want to ask i want i mean i, I want to ask if he will share so at the beginning of the relationship it's a question that i would ask no, I not really because i want to spend it i'm not <laughs> overly materialistic i like nice things you know what i mean but yeah. i just feel like if we are together same way you know about my hair transaction was coming. That's the thing is like maybe we should, the, you should, the girl should have shared it. Yeah. You know if you shared feel like it's, I mean it's something it's, it's that's a big cause yeah, cause issues, issues mm-hmm. you know. Okay. But so you don't is, feel you don't believe don't, in full disclosure. I mean I, I think clearly, it's yeah. it's to the extent that the person feels feels comfortable. comfortable. You know some people are very transparent like they'll say okay this is how much I have in this bank or oh, this is how my bank pay pass mm-hmm. everything. And some people are saying look no this is how I was raised this is how I'm used to doing things I don't want to share. So you respect if your husband doesn't feel comfortable with you knowing that information. Is it, yeah. But I think from my uncle's perspective, he just felt, he said when I'm broke, she trusts me. Do you understand? She don't want to know what's in that bank account <laughs> on a bad day. So I <laughs> think like positively, you know what I mean? He said on a bad day, trust me, you don't want to know. What's stopping you that? Yes. How are you going to how, how are going to, are we going to do it? Yeah. You know because some, at the end of the day there's a lot of men that struggle and they're working yes, hard and yes. women we are very very like anxious and mm-hmm. we ask questions and ah, is that what you have mm-hmm. ah, hey, how, how are we going to eat hey, how are we going to pay school fees how are we going to do this mm-hmm. how are we going to do that and at the end of the day mm-hmm. and you will find that it will start causing problems mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know so just okay let him do what he has been doing yeah. leave him alone mm-hmm. do your own thing so if you need to step in mm-hmm. you can step in but right. you know I, I only know what they show me if you want to tell me it's okay I will see it but if you don't tell me mm-hmm. it's fine with me Are you traditional in the sense that you feel the man should spend more? I think you don't need to know everything. Mm-hmm. But if you are in debt, I need to know. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. That, oh, you yeah. see, that's what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. so you because know, you know America, they do credit checks and you, you inherit yeah. your partner's you know, debt. debt. Yeah. If, if, you know, if they haven't paid it, even in debt. Yeah. In debt. Um, so I feel like if you have that any I funny... You know what I mean? Or if you put the house 
you know, as collateral, collateral on something. Please yeah. let me know. And then you're not asking me for let my let command. command. <laughs> <laughs> if somebody has a command on day. Or, you know, or God forbid something happens to you and yeah. then I realize that you it's are in millions of okay. debt and then yeah. people are looking at me like, yeah. how far? And I think every marriage goes through a stage. So at the beginning, you know, it's like, oh, okay, everybody's kind of figuring everybody out. Okay, what investment did you have? What mm-hmm. this, what that? So I think at the stage when you now start working together better, mm-hmm. it now kind of evolves right. and then you become more... Yeah. like collaborative and I begin to see that as well like I'm knowing more but it's not mm-hmm. because I'm asking mm-hmm. it's because we are you know yeah. becoming more yeah. because we have to work together yeah. so and, and I've seen that with my parents too when they were younger they did their own thing but when mm-hmm. they had to send five kids to America mm-hmm. and London mm-hmm. they had to work together <laughs> as a team yeah. 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 so it just really depends on mm-hmm. kind of like I think and we also like I said like no marriage is the same mm-hmm. some people you see them they are talking mm-hmm. like oh my husband shows me everything mm-hmm. they're people that lie you yes yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> it's true that some, and don't let them put you in trouble because yes, you yeah. go and start saying no I want to know everything my friend knows yeah. everything yeah. it's a lie yeah. so just do what your, you and your husband are comfortable, comfortable doing and work together and it's not going to be overnight mm-hmm. it's day to day mm-hmm. it's really like small wins yeah. small 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 right. I think it will be, you know, pretty hard especially if he's the one that has always been taking care yeah. of you because then it kind of feels like okay you really should help him out now yeah. because he's never asked you for anything. Oh, yeah. You know, he's put a roof over your head. He's made sure that, you know, you are okay and you're comfortable. But you married me, so that's expected. No, <laughs> no extra brownie points for that, but girl, go ahead. Yep. Mm-hmm. You know, so I, I kind of feel like, okay, if he's the, if he's the only one making money in mm-hmm. the marriage, yeah. then there is almost like a little like bit of an expectation yeah. or almost oh. obligation as well. Like, okay... Mm-hmm. Where, you know, like, if you don't do this thing, yeah. you don't know what's going to happen next. Yeah. We might yeah. now, ha- you go know, under. go yeah. under. Because mm-hmm. if I don't earn any more, we can't have this lifestyle that, you know. Yeah. So, I don't know. So, from that perspective, it's, it's hard for me to answer. Because I've never been in a situation where I haven't earned. Mm-hmm. You know, where I haven't had my own. Mm-hmm. And, you know, been able to say, okay, you know, like... You can't do this right now. Okay, fine. Mm-hmm. You know, I'll do it. But next time mm-hmm. is your, your thing to do, actually, you know. Um, so, yeah, so I think a little bit hard mm-hmm. because if you say no and you're not working, you're not, you know, you, you haven't actually said, okay, this is why I'm not giving you, but I'm just not giving you, mm-hmm. then it will, you will Well, how fight. do you say that I find a, an inheritance to be a sensitive thing? I don't think you should have asked for it in the first place. That is as blunt as it gets, yes. <laughs> right? Yeah. Worst case scenario. Yeah. You can't really say that now. So you have to yeah, now yeah, find yeah. one lie that you have to tell. It's or, convenient you know, to say yeah. that. Though. It's that convenient way. to say it's, it's a sensitive thing. Thanks. I just think that it's like, you can't, like marriage is, you married, hopefully not to divorce. Mm-hmm. You married this person. This is the father of your kid. This is someone that you are like, he's your lifelong partner, mm-hmm. ride or die. Yeah. So if you, you said that and he needs you, mm-hmm. why not? Like, I feel like you can need me if we got the school fees, if that money was to pay my children's school fees, or we were of like... Course, we, you shouldn't ask for that. We were homeless. Yeah. I feel this is an investment deal that if I know nothing about and I'm completely ignorant, you know what I mean? Let's just look at reality of life. Okay, it's true. If you peg off tomorrow, mm-hmm. my money is gone. Which is why you back yourself up. Back yourself up. But I'm saying that we are never that smart about backing So you don't want to give me... You just say no. I, I think I would offer my personal money. Well, I would offer a, a sum of the cash. Yes, so not offer, everything. Yeah, I would mean, offer maybe like 10%. I would say 10%. The whole, um, or 25%. The, 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 the properties down. No, 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 no. no, you can't add no. So, yes, yeah, so I would say like give everything. Some of the cash, but it sounds to me like he needs one of either. No, yeah. I say rule of thumb, 25% max. Yeah, 25% max. Exactly. Yeah. So I and think that's, that, that's where you can... That should take you somewhere. Yeah, you have tried. That should take you somewhere. The rest, go and ask your uncle. Thank you, ladies, for being so candid and sharing. Thanks for coming on the show. Well, that's all we have time for today. You've heard it. I don't trust any man who would <laughs> Well, you can join the conversation by using the hashtag Chick Chat Live. If you have a topic or a conversation you would like us to discuss, follow us on all our social media handles on the screen below. I'll see you guys next week on Chick Chat Live.